Before we develop the product class further, I would like to assign some slides to you for some study, and we will soon start developing uh, more methods into the product class, including more constructor, accessors, and mutators. So let's now walk through the slides quickly, but you should, do, you should do a detailed study yourself and get back to me if you got any questions. So we talk about the abstract definition of a method is basically a reusable block of code that can keep calling. So that's uh, the very essence about uh, a method. And we talk, uh, and then we talk about the idea of context objects. So when you are creating, let's say here, you are creating a new object. So what is the context objects? The context object is this object over here, and the context object's address will be stored into some variable. And what if you're trying to make a method call? In this case, the context object will be the object that's being pointed to by the address that is stored in this particular variable over here. I'll try to visualize the context objects in both cases later. Okay, and then we talk about, uh, again, context object and method call is really important. Okay, you want to go over them. And also we talk about how each object may have distinct attribute values. For example, if you have two person objects, and both objects may have the attribute, the same attribute uh, age, but the age attribute value might be different. Okay, you will see that over and over. Uh, for the example. Okay, so we talk about three different kinds of methods over here. Here, I also include constructor as a special kind of method just for uh, easy categorization. And uh, you will see the uh, important points for each one of them. But it's really important for you to understand that for mutator, uh, which means you have, you have a void return type. For example, you're supposed to call height to really change the height of the context object gym to be certain value. In this case, the return value would just be void. So that means you cannot use the method call as an expression, for example, on the right hand side of an, uh, a variable assignment. That's one illegal usage. If you try to do that, your code will not compile. On the other hand, uh, if you want to really uh, use the method call as an expression, what you should do is you should really use uh, a accessor call. In this case, gym.getBMI uh, presumably, uh, presumably will return the double value. In that case, you can use the double value and assign that to some double variable, right? So that's uh, some distinction you have to make. Okay, so let's go further. Yeah, so we talk about method overloading. So here, the example I give about overloaded method is the overloaded constructor, meaning that we have uh, here, we got two different versions of the uh, constructors over here. You can see they're both the constructor for the person class. However, they have distinct um, parameter lists, right? One is with a string, the other the other one with a string and also integer, right? Another example would be we got string and integer, and here we got integer and string, so that's okay. On the other hand, if you got string and integer, string and integer. In that case, uh, it will cause ambiguity to the compiler. So it's going to not compile. Okay? I presume that's something you have seen already in the first year. So you can also review and try out this example on Eclipse if you wish. Okay? And then just more example about uh, defining constructor. So this will be just for two dimensional points class. And then, yeah, so if we go all the way to, okay, so this slide here, is the starting point about how we can visualize objects, which is a very important skill I would like to review. Because later on, whenever we want to uh, discuss certain fragment of code of some advanced concept, we always need to visualize how the objects are being created and manipulated at the runtime. And this is very fundamental skill, which I expect you to have built from the first year. If you haven't, now is the time to actually learn it. Okay, uh, so here review that and then this these are the principles of drawing and I will draw a lot uh, throughout the tutorial series. So you will see uh, definitely examples of that. Okay, so this is one example visualization. So this will be the variable name and this means store the address of this particular object in the memory. I'll show you the derivation uh, a little bit later in the video. And the title here is the name of the class. And also here is so-called the structure of the objects over here. And in this case, we got one, two, three, four, four attributes that we want to show in the visualization. You don't necessarily have to show all the attributes when you visualize an object, just show the one that's needed for your purpose. 
Okay, you'll see examples over here. And then whenever you're trying to, for example, you want to say gym.getBMI. So now gym is some object variable over here. It does not, ref uh, and then uh, it, it does not represent the object itself. Instead, it stores the address of some person object over here. So when you say gym.getBMI, you can think about the dot over here means follow the address that is stored in gym. So follow the address, that means you'll follow that and you'll get to this particular person object. And you want to get a BMI based on the uh, uh, weights and heights of this particular object, right? That's what's happening. Okay, so you will see visualization example for other method as well. And it's just uh, the same idea, but now we're just using point rather than person, right? So that's something I would like you to go over yourself and then get back to me if you got any question. Okay, object creation, and then we talk about if you simply do system out of print line, the object variable over here is going to give you the address. That's something we showed in the earlier video. And then uh, this is also th something I will illustrate to you. So a, a constructor may only initialize some attributes and leave others uninitialized. Uh, for example, in our case of products, we got six attributes over there. If you simply use a default constructor, all the six attributes will store their default values. But you may choose maybe to uh, initialize only two of the attribute values, whereas the four of them will store the default values, right? For example. Okay, uh, that's a diagram. You should really uh, get used to drawing and I will show you example. Okay, so that's about uh, the stuff you have to review up to slide 36 over here, right? Everything about some de uh, basic definition for methods and also how you visualize objects, all right? Okay, so now let's now uh, continue to develop further the product class. So what I, what I would like to do is go back to Eclipse over here. And in the earlier video, just to recap, we actually develop this default constructor, which does nothing. But does doing nothing means all the attributes will store the default values. But now we want to define another overloaded version of the constructor, okay? So what I will do is let me maximize the tab over here. So here we can say an overloaded version of the constructor. And overloaded, overloaded method, overloading means the same method name, but you're giving a distinct list of parameters. Okay, that's what we're doing. So rather than giving no parameters, we're going to give maybe two parameters, let's say, okay? So what I will do is I'm going to say public and then product, since I'm giving the same name as a class, so that's a constructor. Let's say I want to initialize the model and also the original price, okay? There's also some, something you learned uh, from the first year. So there are two ways for you to de uh, declare the parameters for any methods, including constructor. You can choose, uh, let's say you want to reassign the attribute values, let's say model and also original price. Let's say these are the two attributes. I can choose the parameter name simply the same as model and also original price. And then I can use the keyword this to disamb uh, disambiguate in the body of the method. Or I can simply choose a different name. So, so that's something you will see in the review slides. That's why I assigned them to you for study. Let me choose the one that will demand the use of the this keyword. Let's say I simply want to initialize the model. So I'll put a string model over here, the same name. And also I want to initialize the original price. I will also just copy this part over here and then put it here. Okay, oh, sorry. And then, okay, like that. So now how do I initialize them? So let's say what's the common mistake? If I simply say model is assigned to model, if I say that, right? You can see it's not really a mistake uh, because it's not it's not really an error because you don't see a red underline. You only see a yellow, it's more like a warning. If you move your mouse over the yellow underline, they would say the assignment to variable model has no effects. You're basically assigning model to itself. So how? If you try to, uh, move your mouse over the model here, you will see Eclipse very cleverly, it will tell you that when you say model here, right? The model here is really referring to the model as the input parameter, right? So you're really assigning model, which is here to itself. 
So has which has nothing to do with the attribute over here, which is our intention. So this is not right. So how can we disambiguate? The way to disambiguate is if you want to refer to the attributes, you can say this. So this over here is the context objects, which I also ask you to study in the slides. I will also visualize how the this can be can be uh, can be used um, later. Okay, so now if you say this the model, now if you move your mouse over model, you can see now it's referring to the model as the attributes. And whereas the right hand side, the target for the assignment is referring to the model as the input. So now we are doing the right assignment. Of course, you cannot say model equals this the model. That's also wrong, right? That's uh, one assignment. Let's do another one. So we can say this the original price is assigned to original price okay so these are the two simple assignments we will do and this is just another constructor and you can see so far everything compiles if you go back to the product app over here right so we were using this particular constructor before the uh, the default constructor and we are not using the new constructor that's overloaded we're, we're not using that yet so nothing is wrong I want to show you one more thing direct uh, uh, quickly, which I promised in the earlier video. Remember we said before uh, here about a constructor. So here, as soon as any additional constructors are added, the implicit one becomes unavailable, right? Okay, let me show you what I meant, okay? This is the explicit default constructor that we added in the earlier video. For now, I just want to comment it out. Okay, you can slide the block on Eclipse. The shortcut will be control forward slash. If you're using Mac, it will be command forward slash, right? I put the entire method into comments. As soon as I do that, what happened? You can see our code for product app no longer compiles. You can see, you might be thinking, well, shouldn't the uh, implicit default constructor be available for us to use? No, not in this case, because we said that before, as soon as you add anything uh, as a constructor to your class explicitly, the implicit one no longer exists. That's very important. Since, already, uh, since we already added this constructor over here, so that means the default one that's implicit no longer can be used, right? That's why if you move your mouse over here, you would say the constructor product uh, with no parameter is undefined, right? It's a very important point for you to understand, right? That's why I said before, if you really think the default constructor can be useful, you should declare that explicitly yourself because at the same time, you also allow your, yourself the flexibility of adding other constructors, okay? Let me now go back to product app over here. And what I can do is I can just do another product, okay? Let me say product. Let me say P2 is new product. And then I can say control space. And I got two versions for me to choose either default constructor or the overloaded version with two parameters. If I go there, right? So now they, they gave me some default value, but I may not want it. How about I choose to say for the model, I want it to be iPad Pro 12.9. And for the original price, uh, doesn't matter. I would say one two eight nine dot uh, zero zero. I'm just making that up, right? But you see the idea. Okay, and then after this, uh, we can print it out. We can say sys out, and then p two. Question for you. This p stores the address of this new objects. This p two stores the address of another new objects. Would you expect the output of P and P2 to be the same or different? Obviously, they should be different, right? I'll visualize that maybe a little bit later for you. Whenever you're using the you're using a new expression, that means you're creating a new object with a distinct new address. That's uh, very important. Okay, if I do that, you can see these two objects are of different addresses, right? That's what you will see in the console. Okay. And I would like to also very quickly uh, show to you, rather than just passing these values directly, you can also try to uh, maybe uh, prompt some input from the user if you wish. I wanna show you that very quickly. So that might be the only time I will show you some uh, complicated and console application, okay? So the way to do it is we can introduce uh, objects of type scanner, okay? 
scanner. That's a library class from Java. So type scanner, control space, and you can choose the scanner from java.util, from the utility package. If you click on that, you can see now the import statement is there, right? We talked about import in the earlier video. We can say scanner, let's say input will be new scanner. And we want to read it from keyboard. And formally, it's called a standard input. So we say system.n. This line here is really a standard line. You don't need to memorize it. Whenever you need, you need to use it, you can just copy and paste. That's OK. OK, so now we got an input. And let's say over here, let's say we want to create product P3, let's say. But before that, we want to prompt the user for two information. One is the model. The other one is the uh, original price. So we can prompt them for something. We can say sys, sys, uh, send out the print line. We can say enter a model, okay, iPad model. And then you can use a variable to store the answer. So you can, uh, you should be a string. So you can say a string model is assigned to from the keyboard. You can say input dot next line. Okay, that's how you read a string. If you already know this, it's a very quick brush up. If you don't know this, this is time to learn. And we got a model and we can do the similar pattern over here. You prompt and then you store, right? And let's prompt again. Sys out. Of course, you can interleave uh, the lines in different order if you wish. You can play with it. So enter the original price. And then I can say, uh, it should be a double. And then I would say original price. That should be input dot. Rather than reading a string, we are expecting to read a double. Next double, like that. Okay. And then uh, now we got both model and original price storing the data from the user. So now we can say we want to create another product. Let's say P3 would be new product over here. And rather than passing specific value like before, we can now pass the model the user wants to enter and also the original price the user wants to uh, use to create a new objects. After this, we're going to say system the other print line. So we're going to say P3. OK, so let's try to execute this and just make sure you can understand that. OK, and then I'll show you one more feature for debugger as well. But let's just make sure it runs. Uh, and typically, if you use the uh, scanner class, at the very last line of your console application class, you should say input dot close. Otherwise, you will get some warning from Eclipse, which is not really fatal, but warning is OK. But you, you want to minimize the number of warnings if possible. Now, if I try to launch the console application, this is what you will see. These are the two objects, uh, P1, uh, P and P2, right? You can see P here and P2 here. And now we're executing this block of code. It's now saying enter a model, right? So let's say iPad Air, right? I can type whatever I like. And what about the original price? Maybe it would be 1500. I'm making that up. So 23, right? It can be a fractional, uh, can be a floating point number. After I do that, it's going to create just another uh, products, objects, and store the address into P3, and we are printing out the address that is uh, that is stored in P3. And that's why we got in the console over here this particular address, right?